Welcome back. So now that we actually have a way to generate a token, it's time to figure out how we can actually start working with validation of users, meaning that we need some kind of user system so that we can actually start logging in to our system. Now I'm going to do it again, everything inside my security area right here. So that means I'm going to need a new context to handle users. And let's just start with a simple user model right here. I'll go ahead and I'll actually just add a login user entity right here like this. So we have an entity for the login user. And I'm going to make it as simple as possible. So for now, that login entity is just going to get an um, int ID to kind of have an ID available. It's going to get a string username. So it'll be a string username and a password. So I'll also want a property of string password. So, and this password, we'll just keep it plain right now, but this password needs to be a hashed password later. So we will kind of work on that in upcoming lessons so that we can make this hashed right here instead of actually just having plain text, plain text passwords, which is not a good way to save your passwords because if the database get breached, people can see your plain text passwords, meaning they know whatever password you're using. That shouldn't be a good thing to do. So let's go now and actually create a context. And again, just quickly, we'll make a new context. Let's just call it the auth db context right here. Uh, we already made context, so I'll just do this quickly. The context, I want to be able to just make it a db context from the actual context that we know from, um, from our db context used earlier. I want to use the Microsoft Framework 512 right here. Let's just import that one and just import the context. There we go. Now with the context available, we can just make a constructor right here. I'll make an auth db context constructor. I want to send in some options. So I want, I want to send in db context options right here. And the options is going to be passed in through the auth db context. Let's just call them options like this. There we go. And now the final thing I want to do is just add the base call again with those options, like we've also done in previous videos. So now we kind of set up a db context right here that we can use. We want it with that context to set up a property of the type db set down here. And that db set is going to be our new login user um, that we just created right here login user entity, there we go. So now we have a login user entity uh, in our system. Let's just call it login users like this. And there we go, we have a context available. Now with that context available, what we can do is actually we can now start using that context and let's just go directly and use it inside our service. I know we should probably go and create repositories and everything, but I'm going to be lazy this time and just use it directly in the service and say, who cares about clean architecture? And I think that's a bad idea, but still we're going to do it just to show you that it's actually possible to use the context directly inside this area right here. So I'll do an auth db context and just call it CTX right here. And now we'll end up calling it directly inside our actual uh, service right here without, there we go, create local reference. So now we have the context available for next lesson. So we can start actually using that context down here to figure out if you're actually a real user. With the context set up, we need to do a few more things. First of all, let's go down to our startup file and just actually go and generate this new context right here. It's, it's just like the other context we built earlier. The only difference is that this one is going to be a new context for security. So here we'll set up um, security context like this. So just another database for security. There we go. And we'll just paste this in. Instead, this will be the auth DB context. There we go. And instead of calling it uh, main, we'll call it auth. There we go. So now we have an auth DB context available. So now we have the auth context here. Let's just go also and kind of make sure that that context will actually be initialized on startup. So just make a couple of lines right here in the configure. I want to add an extra context here. So let's just say auth DB context. And let's just call it um, auth CTX like this. And I want to use the auth CTX down here to just say dot database dot um, create database on sure create it right here. There we go. Now we know there's a database available and we can also ensure delete it since we're working right here in development mode. So ensure delete it like this. And then we pretty much have our context available inside the development mode. And we can always go and see it in the production mode later. So now we have a context database that we can start using. The context database is very simple right now. All it is for now is just a way for us to start using login users with a username and a password. And later we'll look at both hashed password and we'll also add ways to kind of do permissions for the different users. But again, this is how simple it is. And again, notice right now we're actually using the context that as a kind of repository. It's not the best way to do it in my mind, but still I want to show you guys how you can actually work without using the clean architect if you don't want to for some reason. So there we go. Now we have all of this available. Next lesson we can start using this context by adding a couple of users and trying to figure out if they're actually locked in. So let's end it right here with this simple solution. See you next time. Bye.